there is a place. Ah, the black secret at the heart of your Time Lord paradise? The Time Lords fear. Somehow it is draining energy from the Eye of Harmony. And it is about to be... To an extent which endangers all Gallifrey. Awoke. You attract trouble, Doctor. You always did. I am being diminished. Whittled away piece by piece. Danger! Doctor! Danger! Mistress! Ah. Hello, Sarah Jane. We're on Gallifrey, in the death zone. We must know what is happening there. <laughs> Here at the same time with him. Hi everyone, Sky one two three here. I don't know why I just did that, but anyway, welcome to another Doctor Who review. This time, looking at the five Doctors, not the five-ish Doctors, the five Doctors. And well, it kind of is five-ish Doctors when you think about it, because you've only really got three original Doctor actor actually there because William Hartnell had sadly passed on at this point so it had to be recast so the first Doctor sorry had to be recast played by Richard Herndall and Tom Baker didn't really want to be in it so instead they had to use footage from Sharda which is the unaired um, finale to what's it called um, season 7 so and there's a whole different story behind that as to why it was cancelled and whatnot halfway through. But you know, thankfully we do get a bit of him at least. And while he appears through that limited part, he still appears nonetheless. But before I go any further into this review, I'd first like to recommend that you check out the Big Finish fans live hangout that I did with TJ Productions, Taylor Presents, Cestabrish the Fibster, and Pertwee Smith 11. It was really fun, and I suggest you go check it out on Purchase Smith 11's channel. Um, obviously, it's not live at the moment. We should be doing them um, monthly, I think was the plan. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's around that. So, I highly recommend you check the first one out, and hopefully you'll watch the second one live whenever that goes out. So, anyway, back to review of The Five Doctors. You know, there's something so uniquely Doctor Who about the Five Doctors, that's the only way to describe it, really. Because, you know, while the Three Doctors and the Day of the Doctor have their own merits and their own downfalls, you know, in their own way, they are good. And as, anniver and as anniversary stories, they work. However, they just don't feel celebratory enough in a lot of ways. Because, you know, they very much feel part of their errors, especially the Day of the Doctor suffers from this. It very much feels more like a celebration of New Who than Doctor Who as a whole um, whereas the 10th anniversary special feels more like a celebration of the third Doctor's era in a lot of ways um, you know it does have some past elements but more or less it's just a third Doctor story with the second Doctor thrown in and a bit of the first Doctor as well just a tiny bit of the first Doctor um, but anyway the five Doctors however does feel celebratory it does feel like it's unique in a way. It kind of like fits in with the light at the end, I feel, where it's very celebratory in style, and I really do like that. That really is a good point to make here, I feel. And, you know, it's it's something that just has that unique Doctor Who flavour about it, I feel. Written by Terence Stix, who, oddly enough, didn't write that much Doctor Who in a way. He script edited a lot of it, but he wasn't really as prolific a writer as, say, Robert Holmes. And not only does it have the writing to make it feel very Doctor Who, very celebratory, it also has the music as well. There's just something about that music that is creepy in places, um, rather intriguing in places, mysterious in places, and it basically just sums up Doctor Who in a lot of ways. And I don't, I'm not sure what it is about that music, but I absolutely love it. And it's kind of like, uh, I'm not sure what the instrument is, but it makes a very cool sound. Like, the Dark Tower scenes, you've got that screeching, almost, noise. That is just so iconic, at least to me, um, when it comes to the Five Doctors. It's just an iconic noise, I feel, oddly enough. So, also, to make it celebratory, of course you have the Five Doctors themselves. 
could have done with a little bit more interaction between them. That's a flaw in this story, I feel. And I think it was the producer, John Nathan's Turner's decision. Because, I don't know, I think, as Peter Davison so eloquently put it, he thought they might compete with each other and start punching each other and beating each other up. That might not be exactly how Peter Davison worded it in his interview. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was, if you get the Resurrection of the Daleks DVD, there is a documentary called Come In Number 5. And this is the special edition, by the way, which comes with Revisitations 2, I think, which also comes with The Seeds of Death and Carnival of Monsters. Um, so yeah, he said something like that in the documentary there. If you want to know exactly what he said and have a very good documentary on the Fifth Doctor's era, I recommend you take a look at that. But anyway, you know, back to my point, it could have been more interaction between the two. You mainly get between the two, between the five or four technically, or even three if you want to look at it like that. Could have been more interaction between them. Um, you mainly get limited to that end bit. Um, but the Fifth Doctor and the first Doctor do get a bit of interaction towards the start, and let's talk about that first Doctor, let's talk about Richard Herndall as the first Doctor. He does a rather good job of it, and, you know, I'm going to admit this, the first time I watched this I was rather young, I can't remember how old I was, but, you know, I hadn't watched too much classic I think the only first Doctor story I saw was Dalek Invasion Earth, but I actually didn't realise it was a different actor at all. Maybe it's just because it was colour, maybe I thought he'd got a bit older, but, you know, Something about it, just I didn't realise it was a different actor. Of course, when I looked back in later time, I realised, oh, of course it's a different actor. But it, you just get over that, you just get over it, and, you know, it works incredibly well, I feel. Um, so, obviously, recasting isn't the best option, but, you know, it's the only option they really had, besides cutting the first Doctor out of it completely. And having a four Doctors... Um, with just, you know, the second, third, and, well, Tom Baker probably would have joined, so that would just limit it to just three Doctors. That wouldn't really have worked too well, I feel. So I feel it was a good decision, and casting Richard Herndall was also a very good decision. Oh, and with him, of course, we have Susan, the Doctor's granddaughter, who, you know, when you think about it, really should be in the, um special 20th anniversary special and probably should have been in the 50th of the 50th as well but you know anyway I'm not going to complain about that I'm just going to say it's great in this to have her back I assume it well it's obviously set after her departure in the Dark Invasion of Earth how long we don't know there's no real reference to the Dark Invasion of Earth it's just kind of like she gets thrown up there thrown, sorry thrown back there with the Doctor and yet there's no re real signs of development in her character but you know you couldn't really do that at all not in a anniversary special, you know, it's more focusing on other elements such as the story and the Doctrine one. You can't squeeze everything into it. And you know, as that, um, it works, I think. And then you have the whole Dalek scene between them. Now, arguably the Daleks should have been in this more. You know, the Cybermen do dominate a bit in terms of monsters. I think originally the Autons were supposed to be in it, and the Yeti, um, presumably is an organic one rather than a robotic one that we saw in the one of fear and the abominable snowmen. Maybe we'll never know. Um, I guess we can ask Terence Dix who wrote it, but which it was intended to be because obviously it would need the great intelligence and where it is, I don't think the great intelligence could reach it. And you know, it was acting rather feral, but anyway I'm getting off top of it. I'm gonna use the way more monsters, maybe a couple more Daleks somewhere. Where I don't know where they would have fitted in. The Cybermen do tend to dominate a bit too much, you know, and I would personally class this as a Cyberman story in a lot of ways. Not necessarily kind of like a big Cyberman story, not like an exclusive, um, it's hard to explain, but if I was, I'm going to put this in the um, Cyberman's playlist, basically, because it features them so much it can't be counted as a Cyberman story, and if you were going to class it as any monster story, it would be the Cybermen's. Because one Yeti, one Dalek, quite a few squadrons of Cybermen, mm, which one to choose is a Cyberman story. Um, some may disagree with that, but anyway, moving on, we then have Patrick Troughton and the Brigadier. Now, Patrick Troughton, what a wonderful Doctor he is, and yeah, he hasn't played this role for 10 years now, not since he appeared in 
three doctors and it's amazing how easily he steps back into it. It is absolutely incredible. I know he gets that line about tomorrow's times and whatnot. And then there's also the line where he says, Yes, mine was pretty unpromising too, as a reference to the third doctor. I think that was a rather funny um remark there. And you know, that's good. The story has a great bit of humour as well, but not kind of like humour that makes the story feel cheap or anything. It feels organic, the humour feels real. And then of course you've got the Brigadier who is a great character. Apparently it was originally supposed to play out with the first Doctor and Susan, the second Doctor and Victoria or Jamie, I'm not sure which, then the third Doctor and the Brigadier and the fourth Doctor and Sarah. But of course when Tom Baker declined to be in it and Fraser Hines slash Deborah Watling, whichever they were originally going to include. It might have even been Wendy Padbury or Zoe, but whoever it was, they declined to appear, as did Tom Baker. So Sarah got pushed back to the third Doctor, and the Brigadier got pushed back to the second, you know, which both work. However, there is that whole bit about the Doctor being able to steer the TARDIS, and it, for him, for the second Doctor, it being set after um, he lost... Uh, after Jamie and Zoe's memory was wiped, which brings up a few continuity problems, of course. But, you know, I think it's easily gotten over, I guess. Some people like to say Season 6B. I don't know what my theory is. I have a theory that works for the two Doctors. doesn't work for this, however, yet. I'm going to have to try and work out a theory eventually. It's, oh, I'm a Doctor Who fan, it's what I do. Working out theories for different things that don't make sense. I'm pretty sure most people have their own individual thoughts on it. But anyway, the second Doctor, um, sorry, not the second Doctor, the third Doctor and Sarah. What a marvellous combination those two are. I'm one of the few people who prefers the third Doctor with Sarah to um, Sarah with the fourth Doctor. I don't know why, I just do. I just love the interaction between the two characters more than I do Tom Baker and Liz Laden. Now, that's not to say those two are bad at all, they are incredible, but these two are just that little bit more incredible for me. And what makes it even more interesting is that it's a Sarah who has already left the fourth Doctor and already had the Canine and Company thing as well, meeting up with an older, meeting up with a previous Doctor who, you know, has no, well, not recollection, he just hasn't been through those events yet. And you know, that provides an interesting dynamic that I feel could have been explored a little bit more. But anyway, you know, and also John Pertwee, who hadn't played the role for nine years, maybe. You know, he instantly stepped back into it and does very well in that role as well. And overall, all the actors do a splendid job of this. The story's good. And that's, not, that's all I've really got to say about this. It's a great, great anniversary special. Very Doctor Who is all I really have to describe this. So, ratings wise, hmm, um, 8 out of 10, I think I'll say, because it does have its flaws, but you know, it's an anniversary, anniversary special. I can forgive it for them. And yeah, it's just great fun. It's a good story that just really picks you up if you're in the mood for something that really is a Doctor Who story. So, I think that's all I've got to say. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.